Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6. New version out, literally in the last couple of days. So I'll take a quick look and give you a bit of a showcase on what you can expect. One really, really big feature, one that we've been waiting for for ages. So let's get started and we can demonstrate it right from the get go with a new game. So let's just start a new game just for illustrative purposes. Uh, let's just call it uh, 1.6 Career. Yeah, and uh, we could go into Sandbox to look at it, but uh, that's fine. And let's just go to Hard Options, uh, allow reverting for purely for my recording purposes, and uh, Missing Crews respawn eventually. And in fact, no. If they die, they die. Yes, that's fine. Um, allow all the launch sites, that's fine as well. Um, no entry purchase required on research. I'll leave that off because we need to actually buy stuff that way. That's good. Everything else can stay as it is, Com network on, etc. And extra ground stations, plasma blackout requires signal for control. Uh, some G-force limits, some G-force part limits, and G-force pressure limits. We'll also let them level up immediately and just go. So accept that and just change the flag to NASA or something. Yep, there we go. And start. Now, I've still got mods installed, but the majority of them are actually incompatible. It's a brand new version, so, um, you know, they may or may or may not appear. Some of them appear along, along the bottom of the screen here. I'm not too concerned about those. We don't need to worry about them. But as usual, you might just start by just accepting the first couple of missions for launching a vessel. We don't much mind anyway, because the main feature in 1.6 is that they finally, finally added a way to show Delta V in the game. Uh, at least Delta V when you're planning your vessel. Previously, there's been MechJeb, and there has been Kerbal Engineer Redux, and that will show you the Delta V of all the stages. However, it's now built into the game. So, for example, if we just grab Mark 1 Command Pod, and uh, we just zoom in a little bit, you'll see Kerbal Engineer Redux is still installed down here. But I don't really need this anymore. And there's Delta V stats as well. Let's just close that, and we'll leave this alone for now. We can compare the two. And because it's the very start of the game, we don't really get all that much. Let's just assemble a uh, rocket. There's not much to put in here, really some some fins, three of them. If you're wondering what this is down here, it's uh, basically the the, the editor, uh, I forget what it's called, editor redux, editor, forget what it's called. I'll put it in the, co I'll put it in the uh, description below if I remember. And there really is not much else. We just need a parachute, really. There we go. One parachute and a couple of... Uh, Pods. That will do. Nothing else? No, nothing else we can install. Fine. Normal starting ship, start of the game. Nothing special about it. And in fact, our Kerbal Engineer down here says Delta V is 850 meters per second. And if we rearrange this, you'll already see something new here. To put the engine in the first stage and obviously the parachute in the second so they don't fire both at the same time. That would not go very well. You'll see here it says Delta V 850. It says 721 here. They differ slightly. So we're going to have to go into that a little bit. If we click on the stages now, they've unfold. And you can see lots of information about those stages. We can also click on this Delta V button here and decide how it actually calculates the Delta V. So if I change to um, vacuum, for instance, and uh, now this says 850, just like Kerbal Engineer Redux. Uh, now, so this is obviously reading vacuum delta V. Let's leave it at the sea level because, yep, that's exactly what we want. And you can also then change this to show or hide everything in these um, in these sections here. So if we go to start mass and end mass, you'll be able to see the masses in here. I don't really need that too much at the moment. Burn time thrust to weight ratio is good. Uh, even thrust, I may not even need. Uh, or ISP, at least not by default. So the simplest way is to just show Delta V, thrust to weight ratio, and burn time. And that means for the first time without this mod, without uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux, I can now decide what I want this solid rocket booster to do. In particular, I can bring down the, th the, the thrust limiter, and you'll see over here on the right hand side when I let go, the thrust to weight ratio drops down. And we know, uh, if, well, if you played the game, I assume you're watching this channel, you'll play the game. You'll know thrust to weight ratio, you want sort of uh, anywhere between 1.3, 1.5. 1 1.5 would be nicer. Um, so we can just bring it down to about there. And you'll see that's about 1.52. 1 
1.79 here. Um, again, just to slightly different calculations. But this means the burn time is now nearly 40 seconds instead of, what, what is it, full? Eight. Yeah, and this, this would really slam our curl back into the seat, and this would be much healthier if we bring it down to here. 1.58. That will do just fine, and we'll just save it and launch it with Jeb, I guess. Jeb? Here's Jeb. Yeah. Okay. So as you might expect normally. Now, I normally have X Science in here, but I think it's actually incompatible. Yeah, it just makes it slightly easier to actually go and run all the various different uh, science and bits and pieces like that. Yeah, we don't need anything else. So that is our ship. And of course, we can now launch it just to verify. Bring on SAS. RCS, we don't have any, but that's fine. And we'll just take off. So it takes off at a more reasonable speed than this thing would take off by default. Normally, it would uh, it would go, well, not too, not, not too well by default. It just gets... Uh, hits the all the atmosphere and slows down. So we just grab our mystery gear experiment, keep that. And uh, let's go over crew report and keep that as well. Don't think we have much else in here that I actually want to look at. So we'll just have our ship head over towards the water. And you'll see the Kerbal Island, the island um, landing point over there. We'll come back to a new feature about that shortly. And there goes, there goes our thrust. Ah, oh, well. Hopefully we'll get into the biome, and if we do, we'll be able to keep that as well. As usual at this point, you can just pull your parachute whenever you like, and uh, are we over the water? We are over the water. Can we get another biome? Not sure if the goo, I never remember if the goo can actually do that. No, it's just flying, so we'll just wait for Splashdown, and we'll get some a little bit of science from Splashdown. And to do that, of course, just pull the parachute and head down towards the water. Now they didn't buy us all that much, and they got us nearly 20 instead of 30. Yeah, we'll need to build something a little bit better, so let's just take basic rocketry. That should be straightforward. That has um, a fuel tank, solid rocket booster, and an engine, and really terrible fuel tanks otherwise. And we'll take that. I've got universal storage installed, but uh, don't worry about that. We won't be using it for this video. And then we also got a decoupler on the other node, so a decoupler will do fine. And then we can either go for survivability, which has a heat shield and it has some science, or we go for rocketry. I think we want to go for survivability, but we need a few more bits and pieces of science before that. So let's build a little bit of another vessel. Again, very simple thing, just so that I can illustrate one of the other features of the game. So let's just get rid of all of you. Don't want those anymore. And you, the usual upgrade, we can just go for, well, we can go for liquid engines by purchasing them. Um, however, uh, in fact, I'm going to need to do that for the hammer. So let's just purchase the hammer. Okay, and actually, I want a decoupler as well. Um, yeah, we want to get rid of this, and then we'll just copy that down. So we'll have two of these stages now, so we'll be able to see more about the, the interface here for various stages. So the bottom stage is going to have to obviously be the bottom engine, then a separator, and then the next engine, and then a separator finally near the pod okay and now you are going to see the delta v's again and indeed the burn time and the thrust to weight ratio so we can adjust this bottom one and uh, we can see what the thrust to weight ratio will be we'll bring that down again it's probably usually around about uh, just below halfway or so and in fact probably around halfway 1.22 maybe a bit higher 1.31 Okay, that'll do 1.5. And then the next one up, we can, of course, customize as well. So we can bring that down as well. 2.24. And we'll keep that around 1.7. That'll do fine as well. We can, of course, then put our usual aerodynamics in and we'll finish the vessel and get it ready to launch. So on the launch pad, we can go across to the island airfield in the map screen. We can right click it or left click it and click activate navigation. And now this will show up on our, our ball, our nav ball. Unfortunately, you can't see it yet because it's right down here and we're pointing straight up. Now it's going to be quite hard to control this. So do bear in mind that this won't go as, as easily as it might if we were using a plane of some kind. However, um, we can turn on SAS, let's launch. And I'm going to turn us to around 135 or so and tip us over. 
uh, fairly significantly and you can see just on the very edge of the nav ball now so this is sort of uh, the feature that sort of aims at waypoint manager if you're familiar with that particular piece of software this is not going to go well <laughs> but it's uh, it's aimed at waypoint manager and of course we will um maybe cover that in another episode however um it's just a simple way of seeing exactly where your target is but it's only really enabled i think for the custom landing sites at the moment not necessarily for anything else so uh, there we are and that's only our first stage if i enable the second stage it's already going to be bad enough because we're, we're heading towards the water and the parachute is not going to do too well uh hmm, yes uh i think i may be reversing this one uh not much we can do uh we can sort of go sideways on and we can we can head up trying to head up oh this is fine this is fine what do you mean you don't you don't you don't fly rockets this way i don't i don't see i don't see the problem uh we can just we can just turn around this way and uh <laughs> everything's fine um yeah we can just head over towards the airfield that's of course what how, how else are you supposed to fly this kind of thing i don't know seems fine to me and uh yeah so we know exactly where the airfield is of course now but you can see uh, on the nav ball we can keep heading that way and turning around we won't have very much in the way of fuel left nor can we actually potentially well can we actually land this i, I doubt it we won't have much control in the air, unfortunately, but we can keep on curving around and trying our best <laughs> to get close to the airfield uh, while we're trying to not burn up in the atmosphere. We're going at 600. Well, we're going faster than the speed of sound now. So, yeah, we've got a bit of a flyby of the island airfield. Uh, yes. And uh, now we are um, falling. So can we? Ah, there we go. That should slow us down quickly enough and successful okay valentina may have reached the g-force limit she seems fine yeah seems okay and we're safely floating down into the ocean that's how i always do it now unfortunately i need to move into a sandbox to actually show you the rest i can't show them at the very start of a save game or anything like that so or a career game anyway so uh, we need to go back into a sandbox this is just a sandbox it has all the options available for, to, from the start so if we just grab a fuel tank um anyone will do just as as a ho holder for um for putting things onto in fact we probably need to put a pot on the top first so let's just grab this to get started there we go all right so one of the things that have been changed in this particular version is a lot of them the engines are quite new and look very very nice so uh let's take a look at say the poodle okay you can see that looks very very new the poodle never looked like that and we're going to look for the terrier the lv909 and also the spark i think has changed okay so three tiers of upper stage engine typically used for getting between planets and stuff like that and each of them has various options so um we can enable shroud no you're not going to show me anything for that hmm is it going to be different if i use this one let's have a look Do we have any options yeah we have some variants here so you can decide on what you actually want this to look like a bare engine or indeed have the uh the version with the shroud around it did this other one have it Let's open that. No, that one doesn't have a variant, unfortunately. And the Spark probably has the same kind of options. Yeah, we can have it with a, just a truss mount or indeed a bare engine. Pretty good. Nice options to have and they, they look quite a lot nicer. Now, there are a bunch of other things that have had a bit of a rework. I think the Lander cans have. Um, I want to say... Yeah, so the Mark II lander can, and here's the Mark I by comparison. Here's the sort of terrible version. Um, and they, well, the Mark I doesn't really have much of a change, but Mark II does. This is the one you typically go for out to the planets, or indeed even the heavier lander, lander to the moon. However, he now has a rover variant. Yep, so instead of being circular, you can now build it into a rover. Attach wheels to it and head off. And I quite like that idea. It seems to be a nice thing to actually do. Now, of course, we can't really do much with it out here, so 
why don't we just go and attach some wheels and see how it looks. Now, of course, this isn't available from the start of career games. And wow, the bounce. I may need to change the suspension just a tad on these. However, I have a rear wheel drive, front steering drive, Rover available. And this is the Mark II Lander Can. So we have rather bouncy wheels meant more for lower gravity environments. But the other wheels seem to be particularly um, large or too small for this Rover. And this one is quite unstable as it is. Can we actually change the... Um, no, we want the suspension almost. Wheel stress isn't quite it, I don't think. But uh, yeah, we can have a look at that one with traction control, friction control, everything else in the uh, other areas of the game. So we can uh, just head up and over, over our... Uh, yep. Seems to be absorbing all impacts just fine and much more stable than any other sort of rover. However, this isn't available from the start of the game, but bear in mind, you can now have a, um, a Mark II Lander can. However, we can also look on the inside uh, while we're looking around. So we've got uh, our displays and the person who's also panicking next to us. And of course, there is more to see behind us, but this is almost... Well, it's almost actually doable as a lander on any Cerulean planet, uh, apart from the gas giants, of course. Now, given that you are in a rover, another new feature in this particular version of the game, and we can just get out, I think. Let's just get Bill out. And as you might expect, Bill is in his nice little spacesuit. However, if you really wanted to, you can now apparently remove their helmets. Okay, remove their helmet and remove the neck ring. And you can walk around. Wouldn't suggest this on any other planet than the one we're on right now. But I suppose you could. And if there was a... It'd be nice if there was a, a walk around area you could build that you could pressurize. But other than that, I guess this is just a sort of cosmetic feature. If you want to take screenshots. Now, uh, briefly, if you're on another planet. And there's the moon in the background. Now, while I'm not going to show all of them, a lot of the other things that have been updated to have new models and new skins in the game include the adapters, the, these kinds. Uh, this is the quad adapter. There's also a tri-adapter, like this one. And uh, you can put, obviously, three fuel tanks underneath it, and above it will just show as a single thing. That's uh, sometimes useful. I don't quite use it as often as something like this to actually change the size from one size of stack to the next. However, we're not going to really put that on top of a lander, are we? No. And another thing in sort of visual enhancements is probably most easily seen in the Stay Putnik or the Kerbal version of the the uh, Russian satellite that we all know and love. Uh, you'll see there are reflections enabled. So sort of new for Kerb, uh, Kerbal Space Program it tends to be quite matte coloured in general. However, you know, this in real life, of course, uh, was a satellite that was basically looked like a mirror Essentially, in all directions, it was like a chrome ball, or looked look very similar to that. And of course, if you have more stuff like that, as you can have it's reflecting the um, the VAB around us, it does look quite nice. And then the big section that's had a parts revamp are all the nose cones, essentially. So if we just look for a cone, um, you'll see a lot of the stuff like the advanced nose cone, etc. Uh, most obvious one is the uh, this one, the aerodynamic nose cone. It used to be a bright blue color. Now it's far more realistic, quite nice, and you should fit quite thematically with the rest of the Kerbal parts. So yeah, all of these have pretty much been redone. The advanced nose cone. Uh, let's have a look. What else? What else is on the list here? Yeah, the advanced nose cone, A and B type, the protective rocket nose cone, small nose cone, etc. They did redid all of those. And I think that's pretty much it. A lot of the rest is just all the various different couplers and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much a good overview of the 1.6 changes. Nice to see that now they've had a, a buyer take over the, the, the development or the company. They're continuing to actually put more work into Kerbal Space Program, which is nice because everyone likes Kerbal Space Program. I don't know anyone who doesn't. All right, and that brings us to the end of this quick patch update for Kerbal Space Program. Hope to see you maybe uh, looking at some more episodes in Kerbal Space Program as and when I can actually get there. I think next up is probably a look at the new game from the developers of Ark Survival Evolved um, called Atlas, if it ever releases. So I may well be doing another episode on that and taking a look at that. Hopefully you join me next time for that. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to have fun in Kerbal Space Program. 
And as always, guys, thanks for watching.